It's Joe Valick, I'm still at Clock Factory and I'm now joined by the one, the only, the masked man, Camafly. What one? Nice to meet you, brother. Give me a five. Good connection. Good one, good one. Just played a killer set, man. Where do you, thank you, you had the people jumping. You thank you, thank jumping. you, thank you really much. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, the energy was good. I, I don't know, I, don't, I really just go there and play the music I like. So for me, I was just telling you this, <laughs> as I came here, it's always good. So mm -hmm. it's, I don't know, it's always a good feeling when the people, you know, people mm -hmm. feel the same energy that I'm feeling. So yeah. If you have fun, the crowd has fun. Yeah, exactly. Most I think, I think that's, a, that, that's very real, yeah. I saw the ears flopping around, so like, it m must have been good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you you didn't see like the sweat dripping on the, on, <laughs> on the CDs. Yeah. No, I didn't. But I want to start off with a little gift for you, if that's oh, all right. Oh, uh, Everyone's getting one. No way. How do you know? Show the camera. What have we, what have we got and why you know, do you think? It's my life. And, oh, you, you cannot see it. There's, the first track is It's My Life. And then... Uh, such a shame, such a shame, like, it's one of my all-time favorites because it was like what my fa one of my father's favorite songs. So when I was like five or six, um, yeah, it was like, you, you would play it a lot. So yeah, thank you, thank you really much. I, I wanted to ask you how your, your dad has helped influence you because he, he sort of introduced you to DJing with 80s music and new wave, yeah, is that right? Yeah, I mean, uh, I know that he like, tried DJing for like a couple of years, but you know, it was just like a bedroom thing. He just got, you know, mm -hmm. two like Technics and a mixer and he was doing like cassettes. I think for himself and maybe for, for himself and his friends, mm -hmm. but that's about it. But you know, as I was like, yeah, again, five or six, he was already like telling me how to drop the needle on the record. And you know, I, I would like just do it for fun. Mm -hmm. And it was like just a, just a little kid, but yeah, like, he always like was passionate about music. Not not a musician per se, but yeah, the passion, the music passion was like definitely from him and my mother mm -hmm. through me. Like every car road trip, we will have like see a lot of CDs, a lot of different songs, and you know I remember. Oh shit! I, I never told this to anybody. When I was like nine, I remember he brought home like it was it was all plastic, but it was like a, a toys like console mm -hmm. proper like console with with a fake mixer or anything like it was just like two like crappy <laughs> record players <laughs> vinyl players and one crossfade and it was for kids but i think that was like if we want to say one of my first like introductions mm -hmm. to to this thing and then like i don't know like it was, i don't know i just i would i would just listen to music a lot so at some point it sparked in me like oh shit what if i made the music and that's that's how it went. What and a beautiful DJing story! Was... Thank you for sharing. <laughs> if that, thank no you, Mr. and Mrs. Mr. And Mrs. Camouflage for for getting this amazing guy into music. <laughs> now you actually studied engineering for a while at uni, and then oh, you dropped out to um, you know put put you all into the music. Yeah. How how did it feel to make a leap of faith and it pay off? A first year, it was like you know still my father was like you know, we like had a deal, like either you make it work or you find like a real job. My, my job then was like DJing at bars, bachelor parties, like birthday parties. That was like, you know, I, I could have enough for the month and just like still living with my family. Mm -hmm. And he was like, you know, in a year, I want you to like go out of this house and like live your life. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it, it was risky, but you know, it also made me think smart. It's, it has you think, okay, if I want to do it in a genuine way, I got to put a lot of effort. It's, now it's the time, you know, I was like 20, uh, 2019, so I was 21. Uh, yeah, I was 21 when I decided to drop out. Yeah, it's, it's yeah, first months were like, shit, did I do the right thing? Did I do the wrong thing? But you know, at it slowly turned into like just enjoying this thing and mm -hmm. things actually coming together. It needs like, it needs a lot of like self criticism, the good one, you know, to be like, okay, this song is bad, this song is good, mm -hmm. this idea is bad, this idea might be good, let's try a lot of things. It's just like a, a lot of shifts in mentality once you drop out, at least for me. So yeah, but yeah, it slowly became the thing that it is now and I couldn't be more happy. Thank God you did. 
Yeah. Thank God you did. <laughs> now, Camouflage... I'm going to though. Like, at some point, I think I'm going to study, like, something like, I don't know, something like political sciences or something like that. Mm -hmm. Maybe maybe online. I, I definitely do want to, like, actually dive into something that that I got interested in. I wasn't interested in engineering. <laughs> I, I didn't give a fuck. <laughs> Don't tell anyone. I won't tell anyone. Yeah. Now, yeah, you like to make music in short, quick bursts of creative, short, quick creative bursts. Now, yeah. can you tell me how the creative act by Rick Rubin has helped you um, tap in and enable you to get into the flow state more quickly and easily? Man, I read 40 pages, but I haven't finished the book. I mean, uh, honestly, I think that what I found out in, the, in those 40, first 40 pages was like, I don't want to say that I already thought about the things that he said, but it w it's, I think I, what I can say, it's a, it's a refreshing book. I would definitely just, what I do now is just open and read like a couple pages every once in a while. If I don't feel like inspired or if I feel like, shit, am I doing things right, things wrong, I'm going to be like, yeah, let's stop it for a little bit and see what Rick Rubin has to say. Mm -hmm. it, yeah, it's, a, it's a good insight. I don't think it's like... I don't know. It can be really helpful for people. For me, it's just like refreshing. Just be like, okay, yeah, let's keep being genuine. Let's keep doing things this way. Eventually, it will, everything will come along. I think that's the most that I got from the book so far. Like being genuine, being real, being like, you know, not even thinking when you do art, when you do music. It's just, yeah, it's just like that. Just let it flow. Yeah, it, just let it flow. Yeah, you said it really well, really well, yeah. You're a sample maniac. You're heavily inspired yeah. by Daft Punk and Burial, and <laughs> you like to find like obscure samples on yeah. CD libraries and online yeah. forums with lost Japanese records <laughs> and all that sort of stuff. So tell me, why is it so important to find unique and special samples? Honestly, it satisfies me. Like, I just be like, damn, I find this thing that probably like not many people have found, and I'm like, that's my little treasure, you know? Mm -hmm. I've been doing this for a lot with like 90s CD samples. I've been doing this a while ago and I started doing that again. As, as I slowed with the obscure like song samples and now I'm like di diving into sample CDs from the 90s. Mm -hmm. Most of them are trash because like, <laughs> obviously like the music has changed. And yeah, yeah, you sure. hear that and I'm like, oh shit, yeah, whatever. But some of them have like, they've got like some pretty interesting stuff. Like, you know, I, it's funny because like I was at Notion's house before and we were talking about Speed Garage and there's this sample pack I have from, 90, from 1997, mm -hmm. which is full of stuff that, it's like 125 loops that work insanely well for Speed Garage. Mm -hmm. For some reason, you bring them to like 145 or something and they're perfect. And this from like, what, 26 years ago. That's insane. Hit the jackpot. Yeah, I got, I got a lot of them, but you know, again, it's my little treasure there. <laughs> Why is the color green so important to you? Uh, I don't know, like, it was pink once, like, what was it, two years ago, it was pink. And then I was like, nothing. I, I, I do these decisions, like, I take these decisions impulsively. So I was like, I feel like going for green, brown, mm -hmm. like, stuff like that. And now I just put the green mask over anything. Mm -hmm. I, I'm trying to have more colors, but I'm starting, like, I'm picky with the with this stuff, so I'm studying what goes well with what. So mm -hmm. I think there's gotta be more colors in the future. But right now, I feel like I don't know. I don't know how to tell it. I feel like the green suits me right now. Not not pink anymore. Just green earth tones, earth earth tones like natural green. vibes. Yeah, that's uh, how it came together for the last EP. The last EP was just like that. I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna just roll with it until I, I get tired of it. You know. I like the colors. Yeah. <laughs> Till you want a new color anyway. Um, positive energy oozes from Camouflage's music here. How has making positive music helped your mental health? Uh, wait, can you repeat? How has making positive music helped your mental health? Positive. My music is positive music. I think so. Uh, that, especially that especially the trio of EPs, the Faith, Giant and uh, Apothesis, is that how you say it? I think it's very positive. Uplifting at least. Damn, uh, yeah, tell you what, I, I don't think about my music in, in that way. To me, it's just like, especially the first, the first EP was just like a bright spark of energy there. The second was a little more thoughtful. The third one was just like closing the circle with some of everything. Yeah, I mean, 
I think, in general, uh, the process of making music, it's cathartic. So, and I'm not like the type of guy that, you know, if I'm feeling bad, I, I'm not sure I'm the one that, you know, picks up Ableton to, to go through that. I'm, I mostly make music when I'm in a good mood mm -hmm. or I'm just feeling like having a good flow of ideas. So I think more than help me is just like coherent with, with everything else. So it's like if I improve my mental by myself, I'm going to have mm -hmm. more music that feels this way. And once the music is done, you know, I feel proud of it. So mm -hmm. it goes back to, you know, it's like a cycle. You know, making mu I think making music is cathartic, so every time I make it, I'm like, not only I was just feeling good before, mm -hmm. but I'm feeling good afterwards. And I also like, you know, some, I know some, some people will, are like, yeah, but I've been talking about this with people like, you know, not every idea is a good idea. I'm like, mm. it's whatever, you know, it's good. Bad ideas will sit there for, for a while, and, you know, it's whatever. Just having done it, it's, it's good for me. Like, I don't, I don't, I don't. <laughs> I don't need every idea to be like the, the most insane song ever, so I'm, I'm cool with that. Yeah, I'm pretty, I, I think I have a pretty like high standard for myself, so that's, that's enough. I don't want to, I don't want to add uh, any drama to myself making music. I think that's more than enough. <laughs> You've described making music as your safe space on, on that note. How, how, how are you maintaining that as it becomes more of a serious thing for you? Uh, it's pretty natural, like, as I said, like, I usually don't feel like making music is something that I ever need to do. So for me, it's just like, I just make it. I just have ideas and make it. Or if ever I'm like, okay, I'm running out of new tunes. I'm like, let's, let's, exper let's experiment a little bit. Mm -hmm. Let's do something new. Let's try some new instrument. Let's try some new melodies or anything like that. So for me, as long as I can keep doing that, I'm cool. Like, it, there's not like the way of doing things on a more serious note, mm. like, or like talking ab in, about this as my job. I don't know, it, it didn't like phase me. It, it, I'm still doing it as, as it was. If anything, I'm less stressed than before. Like knowing mm. that it's, it's secure, kinda, you're you, a bit more you know, secure. I, yeah, I'm, I'm more cool about it. I was secure before, but a little more like, oh shit, what if this, what if that? Yeah. Right now I'm just like, I don't know, I, I found my, like, my workflow and just making stuff and then at some point being like, time to release music, let's see, mm -hmm. what do I like right now, what, which one of my finished tracks I feel right now, which one makes sense for an EP or maybe an album. So it's pretty uh, like straightforward, everything is pretty straightforward and yeah, if anything, I, I feel like better than before. Before it was really like a safe space more because of like, you know, I, I wasn't sure if this was going to work out or anything. And I'm like, let's just keep doing it and have fun with it the most as I can, you know? Yeah. yeah. Locked in. Definitely. Yeah. Okay, last, last question now. And excuse my pronunciation, but... Feti bravi e mangiate le verdu. Do you still stand by this? And what does it mean? Hmm. Can I... Hmm. You are, you are, okay, I know where this is from and I know you had your deep dive in my own stuff. Uh, yes, I stand by this and, and I should do it more. <laughs> <laughs> it, means, it means be good and eat your vegetables. Yeah, eat your vegetables, that's it. You look I, I healthy and happy, so I think you must. Yeah, I mean, I, just today, like after like probably a week of having shit food, I've, I, I had like my whole like salad bowl and like chicken wrap and everything so nice i'm, I'm back on that on that grind yeah i just you know good mind good body mm. so eat your veggies eat your veggies making me hungry man you're making me <laughs> hungry well that's all my questions before i go have you got anything you want to get off your chest shout out Bristol for having me for the second time funny enough i haven't been in like I haven't played properly in London except for a couple of surprise things or anything. So shout out Bristol for having me twice before any other city in England. So yeah, shout out. Shout out Bristol. Heard it here first, Camouflage. You know, let's get that connection. Okay. <laughs> no, no, wait, wait, wait. The good one. Good one. one more, uh, one more. Uh, we could do one more. Yes, my brother. Good one. That's a good one. Big love, man. Big love.